Thank you, Mr. Knupkanis. Tell us a bit about yourself. Where do I start? Um, I've grown up in Leicester all my life. It's a fabulous city. I've seen so many changes. It was a city where, first of all, there were very few people that looked like me. And now look at it. 21st century, half of the city looks like me. It's a diverse, pluralistic city. As a child growing up, it was tough. It was tough on two fronts. One, because the city itself was quite a racist place. Um, but secondly, I, we had parents that still wanted to try and retain um, a part of India in the UK. And, I, and finding that balance for a kid growing up in the 60s was quite tough for, um, for a child of Indian origin, I think. You know, I went to school, I was probably one of two people in the whole school that was of Asian background. Um, and all my friends tended to be English. Um, but it, it didn't mean that I lost my identity. In fact, I think because I was that one person or one of two, I looked for what my identity was. Um, and I'm extremely proud that searching around the history that I come from really strengthened my character. And I think that strengthening of character is what makes me what I am today. I think the mid 70s taught me a number of lessons and those lessons were that suddenly a person of colour was not going to have the same access and opportunity as people that were not of colour. And that began to shape my thinking of why I needed to stand up and be a voice for other people. So I started off very young. I mean, I was in marches at very early age. So, so for me, you know, all of these are shapers. They shaped how I, I am today. So where were you born? I was born in Amritsar. Um, I actually, my mother went into labour while she was at the Golden Temple. So I often think of myself as a Golden Temple baby. Um, and I'm blessed, I think, that I sort of started life off in such a spiritual place. And I think that's always stayed with me. I'm quite a spiritual human being anyway. Um, but I've also been able to um, look at all other religions and actually really recognize that most religions or all religions basically teach the same practice. So how old are you when you moved from India to Punjab to Leicester? Well, I came to, well, I arrived in England just before my first birthday. So I celebrated my first birthday in the UK. My Nanaji was already here. And so my mum and my dad joined him and my Masiji and my Masar. So um, we already had a family already here because um, my Nanaji had come here in the 30s. What's your dream was when you were a child? Oh, um, I think my parents um, had sort of ambitions. My mother particularly wanted me to be a doctor, but coming from a very traditional Indian family, I'm afraid it was marriage at the age of 18 or just before 18. Um, I've always wanted to have a public life. I looked at Indira Gandhi when I was a kid and saw this wonderful, strong woman and she sort of inspired me to look at politics. So I was very young when I looked at politics. I, I, I was 11 when I wrote in an essay I wanted to be Prime Minister of India. So my political ambitions, I'm afraid, for high office are not now. They, they started a long time ago. Being a politician, especially Asian female, mm. until today is quite challenging. How do you face all this? It is challenging. It remains challenging. Um, I don't think that it's um, easily understood by the Indian community or the Asian community how difficult it is to actually get into frontline politics. Um, you still face a lot of barriers. I don't think our people are always mindful of that, number one. Number two, I don't think they're very supportive of it either. And I think sometimes it would be much more helpful if they recognise that you know, when somebody wants to try and be ambitious and go for something, to be supportive of it. Having said that, I have had some really good supporters on the journey. Um, so, you know, but you do find that this lack of engagement from our communities um, has been a bit of a hindrance rather than a help. A bit challenging being a politician and you married, mm. of course, you have a family, you have mm. kids. Mm. How are you balanced those? Well, the first thing was that 
I wanted to start a business. Um, when my dad decided that I was going to get married, um, and I'd always come from the hosiery background, so I knew hosiery inside out, um, I decided that you know the best challenge to my dad would be is to get a business running. Um, Ashok hadn't come from a business background, he came from PR in India. So it was an experience for him to learn. Um, so the dynamics was quite interesting. But I'm, I'm driven by being trying to be the best. So I wanted to be better than my dad. Um, I've left my dad to pieces, but he was my biggest challenger as well. He was the person who would constantly say, you can't do this because you're a girl. And so I had to prove that I could do it because I was a girl. Um, and so at 19, I um, had a baby in tow, a business I started, and I took on a mortgage. So I did sort of things a little bit, perhaps a little bit crazy. Um, but you manage things. I think, you know, when you've got ambition and drive, I think you do manage things and give a job to a busy person. A busy person will do it. So I've always managed. I mean, you know, I'm lucky. I've got a very strong family network. Um, I've had lots of good support always um, and if you know my husband he's one of those very easy flow husbands who doesn't expect that you have to have everything prim and proper um, so so it works well. How are you going to describe Mrs Verma? Mrs Verma um, she's a headstrong determined um, person who is very principled um, I won't bend away from principle and I would rather give up something than, than compromise on principle. Um, and I think just growing up seeing such discriminations and so, such inequality, um, Mrs. Verma public face, Mrs. Verma private are about the same. I do have, um, for those of the people who know me, I do have a wicked sense of humour, which doesn't always come forward in the public life because, of course, it's a very serious job I do. Um, but I do like having a, a laugh and a giggle. Um, and that's the sort of, I'm a fun person. So how are you going to describe right, honourable, Bernas, Sandeep, Verma? Very serious. <laughs> She's a serious character who takes her, whatever she does in life, um, she gets very committed to. So as, as somebody who looks at legislation, which is going to impact on millions of people, I think I have to take this job very, very seriously. I also believe that I'm in a privileged position and therefore to make sure I maximise the impact I can have to better um, the lives of others. Um, you know, it's, it's a real privilege to be able to serve the, the British people and for that I shouldn't be quietly um, uh, adding feathers to my nest without looking at what impact it's having on other people. Recently you appointed International Development Minister. Please tell us more about that. It's funny because when I first came into government in 2010, I started off as um, being in the Department for International Development um, as, as a whip um, and now as a full-fledged minister. Um, of course, the responsibilities are different, but I am so, so pleased to be there because it really ties in with all the work that I love doing. So the United Nations, the Commonwealth, you know, the work around aid, the work around trying to develop, develop developing countries. Um, it's just a wonderful portfolio and I've seen my area of responsibilities and I'm really, really pleased. And I'm working with a brilliant team. Um, it'll just ensure that what I've done sort of as, as, a, as a norm in my life of looking at development and developing people, uh, it'll become a ministerial post. It's really great to be there. So you've just been to States, back mm. with the great news with awards. Mm. Just tell us a bit about that. Well, it's the Ellis Island um, Honor Medal of Honor. Um, and it's awarded to people who have come from diverse backgrounds and managed to achieve um, over and beyond um, what regular people would achieve. It's a real privilege because I was one of two international awardees only. Um, I was very humbled to be given it, um, given the stories I was hearing of the other awardees, um, whose, whose stories were so awesome and inspiring that, you know, I felt my own story 
sort of faded in the distance. Um, but it was a great privilege to be nominated. I'm grateful to um, the United States for honouring me with it. But it just shows you that your work does get recognised, it gets seen, it has an impact, it does change people's lives. And if that happens, and it happens for the better, then I'm really pleased to be given those awards. My dream would be to be able to be there to see a Prime Minister of Indian origin govern the um, govern UK. I think it would be just a wonderful step forward um, because this country does really offer that opportunity for everybody to achieve their dreams. I think you've just got to have the dream in the first place and then be um, quite resistant to the, the sort of challenges that come along. And if you've got the tenacity, I think, I mean, you know, our communities have done very well in this country. And part of it is because this country gives you the opportunity. And we should be really, really grateful that we have in this country the possibilities of achieving most of our dreams.